Hello, my name is Sean Sands from GamersWithJobs.com and the Gamers With Jobs conference call podcast, if you so please. Uh, back here with Stellaris. The release of Stellaris is today. I'm playing playing some. Uh, and yeah, right back into it. Right back into the, the, the uh, what are we called? What are we called again? The Drachmar Imperium, uh, which is a, a clearly evil race um, and clearly influenced by uh, the... the Mm, let's call it inconsistent success of my last campaign. Uh, we're going to have some nice research over here, if nothing else. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, now, that the, now that the game is out, uh, excellent, scientist has leveled up. We'll probably send him to do some research. Yep, we are, um, we now know without a doubt that the thriving biosphere is not something unique to Drach Prime, but the scientist, you got to get that, that throaty K at the back, that sort of, that Drach it's got a, it's got a, oh God, I was, I was, I had linguistics, um, uh, classes in high, in college, uh, uh, two and a half decades ago. I forget, a glottal stop? I want to say it's a glottal stop. My favorite was always fricative, uh, which is, which is essentially the F sound, the fricative right there in it. Um, but you got a drach. The Drock Prime. Uh, both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life thro found throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalog life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus our planetary survey efforts on habitable life-bearing worlds. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Why not? Situation log update. It's not even something. We, it just sort of happens. As we find, find habitable worlds, it'll do pretty good anomaly found another a ton of anomalies um you go ahead and you go ahead and research that one uh are we fine nope wrong one are we finding anything over yeah there's gonna be a ton of this is gonna be our research center for sure um so wanted to kind of tackle the question of now that the game's out um what do I think? Do I, I mean, is it like, it's easy to just go, oh, it's really good. I had a lot of fun. Um, but the realistic part of it is this is a very early uh, effort from Paradox, right? Paradox games, when I think of Crusader Kings 2 or U4, I think of a game that really is fully fleshed out, right? It has been out for a while um, in the case of... Uh, the mummified remains of a single individual belonging to a previously unknown mammalian species have been found drifting in high orbit over Idra 2. The being is dressed in what appears to be a flight suit complete with a helmet and maybe a fighter pilot that ejected in some ancient battle only to be forgotten and left behind. Um, our study of the corpse has provided some interesting data. Nice. Uh, so anyway, like I... I also don't want to be Pollyanna about it. I don't want to pretend like, oh, best game ever, right? This is, you know, like I was saying, when I think of something like EU4, I think of a fully fleshed game that has multiple uh, expansions to it at this point and, you know, has over time definitely um, evolved and improved uh, as a result of those. You know, I lo I've loved, I've played EU4, Europa Universalis 4, for 1600 hours something like that 1700 who knows Construction um complete. excellent excellent um but I, mean, I i have to admit of course when the game first released it had lots of great things about it, it had some things that were kind of bumpy about it and you had to work around that which is sort of um i don't know standard fare for a paradox game and, you know in fact a lot of people have traditionally felt like paradox games when they release are pretty buggy and i have to admit this one does not seem buggy right this this game is running really really smooth and and you know cleanly for me um so you know that bonus points to that um not bonus points but you you get what i mean like it's it's good to have a game that you can have confidence is going to be playable like every time you start it up you're not just waiting for that next crash system I'm survey certainly complete. been there Anomaly before found. uh yeah let's okay sure let's do it our first finds on idra 7a point toward more interesting discoveries to be made on the surface on the research surface complete um excellent uh first new research we will work on biolab or get that get that influence up yeah keep that influence going i want lots of influence this game and we are going to build our colony ship because we've been saving up for a while for it partly because we've had nothing else to buy oh yeah i love this 
Yeah, we're probably going to send our um, our construction ship to build a frontier outpost here. Uh, old Explorer located in a remote part of Yudra 7-8. The science team of the Drachloro de Clore has found an out-of-place metallic tablet. It contains basic information about a distant system using illustrations and what appears to be a periodic table. Science officer uh, Coxurum has been able to use the information to deduce the location and potential resources of the system. Oh my God, this sounds like Voyager. Is this, is this Voyager? I kind of hope it is. Yeah, uh, illustrations and a periodic table. Yeah, this, is it gonna lead us to Sol? What, where did it, what did it show us? Uh, nope, not Sol. What is this? Duracus. And we know that Duracus, uh, you know, shock, it's got energy credits. Super cool. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and do some more of our our uh, research that we had saved up. Where's the one here? There is one here, right? I swear, yeah, there it is. We'll take our research risk of 15%. Uh, we are building a colony ship. Um, well, I guess we're going to, which one of these planets are we going to colonize? I'll come back to my point in a minute. I wasn't quite done. Uh, this one or, uh, this system is so awful, but it has a much bigger planet. I think we'll probably go here. Wild storms, uh, physics output plus some physics research area. Uh, not going to be super happy, but that's okay. We will make it work. Excellent. So we will build our colony ship and we will colonize over there. We should have the energy credits to support that. Um, so yeah, uh, this game also is not without its problems. Uh, as, as you know, releases going on today, I know there's kind of a big hubbub um, about a couple of reviews that have come out uh, that, you know, most of them are putting in that 85, 80, 90 range, uh, which feels right to me. Um, you know, I was on the uh, three moves a three three moves ahead podcast this past weekend, um, and I think all of us were in a general consensus, except except Rowan, who honestly wrote the uh, uh, a, a, a I'm not going to call it scathing, but it's sort of, it's a it's a critical uh, review on IGN, and you know we were talking with him. Most of the rest of us were in sort of alignment that um, this is this is a wonderful platform from which to see how it evolves and ages over the next year which is just again that's like what i expect coming into a paradox brand new game it's just how they operate and that's not to say this isn't a full game that's not to say there are obvious you know segments missing or that they're holding anything back um but they they have a great history oh we just failed never mind i'm waiting to talk about that and it was a failure um let's clear out some wasteland uh, but that's just how I think of Paradox making games like this um, from the perspective of it's something they plan to support for years and years and years and years. Uh, and I like that about them. Um, I do. I like, I like, you know, that Crusader Kings 2 still gets frequent attention and, you know, isn't just sort of lost and ignored at some point. Uh, we'll move him. Oh, this... We've already built everything we can here. We might as well build, move our construction ship up here for when our colony is founded, uh, which we're getting close to. Um, and I, I, I agree, you know, the mid game, one of the things I said on the podcast, <clears throat> and I love quoting myself, everybody loves to hear people quote themselves. But one of the things I said is you have to bring something to this game. Uh, it asked you to kind of role play complete. this empire. Uh, our governor has leveled up and gamed adaptable. So let's take a look at, yeah, good for him. Nice job. Nice job, Gov. Uh, who is our governor here? Our governor is Governor Ludrimex, um, who has uh, adaptable. I don't see adaptable. Do we have another governor somewhere? How would he have leveled up? Construction complete. All right, hold, hold, slow down. Uh, leaders. Here he is. Uh, so he's just going to gain experience faster and plus 10% food. Right. Good. Um, got our colony ship up and going. We are going to zip over here and we are going to colonize Elfine 3. All right. So where do we want to land? Well, there's not a lot of great options as far as um, 
setting up to have much in the way of predetermined uh, adjacency bonuses. So I think we will land, I'm gonna land here. Because I wanna have room, we'll get adjacency bonus here and here, eventually here and here. I think that's fine. All right. Um, yeah, like the mid game, it, it's kind of, I mean, you, Rowan asked a question in, in the episode that we recorded, which I thought was really good, which is why are you, like, we were talking about continuing to explore and continuing to kind of go out and fight, and he was asking why. You reach sort of a, a stasis eventually, a stability, and there's nothing pushing you. Um, I don't agree with that. I actually think there are things pushing you. Um, I think a lot of the game mechanics are built on, you know, uh, th there's less sort of these explicit moments in the game that are saying, go do this, as much as it is the mechanics are kind of pushing you in the direction. Um, but I do also think you have to bring your own sort of comp element to that, right? You explore and expand because you are the, 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 the Drak, why can't I remember her name? Drakmar. I keep wanting to say Drakthar. I should have written that. Uh, the Drakmar Imperium. And that's what the Drakmar Imperium does. And then when you go do that, the game rewards you with some events or research or, you know, interactions or whatever. Um, if you were just kind of waiting to kind of be prodded, this game's not great at that. Um, and I don't know that it has to be, right? I don't, I, 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 I don't know that it, it, that's, the ethos behind this. Uh, so what do we got here? Rock potential. Elthine 3A is exceptionally rich in minerals. <laughs> good. I hope so. That's good news. Um, minerals that are unfortunately of no use to us. Oh. However, science officer Coxurum believes the many elements in the crust of Elthine 3A can be transformed into potentially more useful forms through positron bombardment. The Drachlorog Declore has requests that the requested... Oh, Right, come on, that the Drakmar Imperium set aside 100 energy credits for the purpose of this project. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Let's do some Situation pos- log updated. Let's just rip some positrons into that planet. Go. Love it. Uh, we are on our way. Colony ship on the way for uh, setting up shop here in Elthine 3 with its positron bombarded moon. It's toxic positron bombarded moon like this is a moment i'm talking about like there you can i can build a story in my head around this you know about colonizing this desert world and with this toxic moon that has these uh resources uh the crew of the draclora declore are pleased to report that the experiment was a success and a significant number of dense mineral veins of elthine 3a have been transmuted into usable resources please 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 nine <laughs> yeah all right nice positroning lovely uh move here build mining oh can't build the mining station yet but we will soon uh as soon as our colony ship disembarks and we set up shop. The first Drakmar colony. Our colony ship has gently touched down by the outskirts of a large oasis on Faradex. Faradex, yeah, nice. Uh, situated at the foot of a large mountain, this ideal location provides shelter from the wind and has easy access to water. The ship has been permanently converted into the administrative headquarters of the new settlement and its reactor core is in the process of being removed so that it may serve as the colony's temporary power source. Hundreds of small tents and prefab shelters have sprung up around the former starship's massive hull as colonists begin to disembark in large numbers. The first Drachamar city on an alien world. Uh, so get a bunch of science. Research um, complete. That's now part of our empire, so our construction ship can build a mining station. And we will go back to surveying systems. Uh, mean, meanwhile, on Drak Prime, Research we need to complete. build... Oh, no. Oh, okay. Uh, should we upgrade? We got 175 in the bank. Um, no, we need to... I want more ships. I'll learn my lesson fast. Research speed, excellent. I love that. Uh, physics lab or energy, um, nope, or a Betharian power plant. Mm. No, we're gonna do physics. And nanocomposite armor, I think is what I want next. Buildable population though. I haven't really messed with robots, but that's coming. 
Hopefully it'll give me that again. Okay, so uh, things that things that you know I'm, I'm a little critical about on this game include. I mean, there's not a lot. It's not totally easy and transparent to access uh, information. Um, from a paradox game, I'm really used to having lots of map overlays and you know being able to dig deep and get into um, some real clarity around. Uh, other cultures and other civilizations and what their relationship to me is and how you know strong they are and stuff like that I think one of the things in the last game that really ended up you know standing out uh, as, as a real impact to uh, to, to us to me um, was this idea that I couldn't get Intel on or at least I don't yet know how right I don't want to blame the game for stuff that maybe it does and I just haven't gotten my head on straight about yet um, but it doesn't seem like it was easy to get uh, a, a, a glimpse of my neighbor's technology level, like how many ships they had, how strong they were. There just weren't many options to figure that out. Um, and as a result, I went into that, um, that combat, that, that ill-advised war, kind of blind. Uh, and I think that's a... Uh, that's the thing that shows up, I feel like, periodically throughout this game. I feel like that's that's a, a, a feeling I have relatively often. Um, again, it doesn't break anything for me. It's not, now I don't like the game as a result of that. Uh, but, you know, and, and in fact, I think the, you know, the reason that exists is probably so that it's more approachable and more people can get in and play and feel comfortable. Um, and that's sort of my own pre uh, pre expectations uh, influencing how I'm interpreting the game. Um, and we now have Tau Seti, excellent in our in our borders. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think there are criticisms to be made of this game. I think it is a strong, strong foundation. I think it really has a lot. Uh, of of potential like i can't i'm i'm enjoying playing the i'm having a blast playing the game now i can't wait to play it in a year or two um in whatever form that complete. is because i think that will be uh all the more impressive like there's just so much here to build on like i would love a great espionage feature like a full espionage uh component um i'd love to have sort of more internal politics things going on i'd love to have more random events i you know i'd love to um uh, be able to have sort of uh, more control and more influence, a, a, a stronger trade uh, uh, game. I think all those things are really interesting to me, and 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 stand as an opportunity um, to you know to keep going after. Uh, are they missing? Sort of. They, I mean, yes and no. You know, because they're missing in the sense of here's what I expect the game to be, or here's what I think it can be. Whoa. Okay. Space pirates, and we are literally in their home world. Um, science ship Draclorod de Clore has encountered a hostile pirate fleet in Fijantris and is currently attempting to evade them, and apparently did it. Uh, good. They're calling themselves the Cursed Ones, uh, spreading chaos and fear along our civilian shipping lanes. Let's build science ship one. Under attack. Whoa. Leave my science ship alone. What is your problem? Uh, we hopefully will be able to retreat out of this situation. 111, we have 176. Uh, let's build one more Corvette. Let's slow things down a little bit. This is up and running now. Okay, so that science bit there does go away when you put down uh, your world or your, your, your starting position. All right, retreat. Nine, eight, seven. Oh! Four, three, two, one. Yeah. Get out. Yeah, he's gonna... Ugh. Don't go that way. Where are they going? Are they following? Zathmak, yeah. No, they're following... They're coming up here. Okay, good. Whew. Uh, let's see. I guess for now, go ahead and keep exploring the system. I don't want to send you back. They're going to Zachmoth, right? Zathmok, which is here. And once we have built our fleet, uh, we will go kill them. A whole bunch. Recruit an admiral. 
Uh, evasion, sublight, and speed. Yeah, that's my dude. I'm pretty sure. Uh, sensor range is nice. I don't care about that. This is my guy. Admiral Axmakot. These names sound awesome. And it is going to attack my military installation. I don't think we have time to wait. Go, go, go. Nice. Um, so do they... Yeah, they... In, okay, so they can enter the hyperlane from anywhere. They don't have to be at the edge of the system. Oh, I like that. That's cool. Um, yeah, so the, the warp... The warp characters have to be along this sort of outer edge to enter the hyperspace, uh, to enter warp. Um, but it looks like you can enter a hyperspace lane from anywhere inside a system. I like that a lot better, actually. Um, yeah. Station under attack. I think that makes us a little more powerful, just in general. And they've got missiles. We also have complete. missiles. Um, we're a missile technology... Uh, Starting group. I didn't start with lasers. Search complete. Go kill these dudes. Hostile fleet engaged. Fire missiles. Um, yeah, we're probably gonna lose at least one. The thing about missiles is they are a hundred percent to hit unless the other guy has the point defense items. Um, which, you know, that's, if they do, that's real bad. Okay. Oh, forgot. Uh, do we want to clear tile blockers? I think, I think maybe we do. Well, uh, naval capacity. Stick to a theme. Have a theme, stick to that theme. Uh, so I think we lost a ship here. We've got this under control now. I like the missiles. Makes for interesting looking combat. Yeah, this should finish him off. Situational. All right. Let's get you home and healed up. Yeah, I love this. This go into hyperspace lane immediately. Research this, and then we're going to get him to heal up too. Because he's got 1.2% left. Three hit points. Eesh. Uh, what is this? Military station. Is this their... Yeah. This is the pirate base military station. Which we will come blow up very soon. Um, build another Corvette. Uh, we need to start building stuff. We've got... Got money in the bank here. And we don't need to do that. So, what do we want to build? What can we build with that? That cash. That cash money. Uh, well, you know... Oh, did we build our... Or are we still building it? Yep, we're still building our outpost over here. Um, so we can't do anything with our construction ship. But once we can, we'll we'll take care of that system. Uh, let's see. Go ahead and... Should we get another can the science ship just to have one? Just to have them out? Yeah. And then another Corvette. Focus on Navy for now. Navy, fleet, whatever. Um, and this is honestly my, so back to, back to just sort of talking in general about the game. Um, I think, you know, and I haven't, I guess I haven't finished a game yet. Uh, partly because I've, I've enjoyed this phase of the game so much, like the exploration and the kind of trying to just get a foothold. Uh, I dig that. I'm really, that's like, this game does that better than, you know, any game I can immediately think of. Um. And, you know, even even as you get to the point where you've got a lot of contacts, I've still felt that the game does a good job of giving you reasons to be an explorer and try new things and discover new things. Um, it doesn't just... Uh, like, it can be static if you just get to a point. You're like, all my things are balanced. I'm, you know, in a big federation. Um, I'll just hang out here till the end of the game. And that's... I, I can see how a person could do that. Uh, I think you have to bring a little bit of just your own take to it, your own 
uh, flavor, for lack of a better term, um, of the race that you want to be and what you want to achieve with them. I mean, that is sort of the classic story of a paradox game is that they don't necessarily constantly present you, the player, with goals. They present you a, an environment that you can do stuff in, um, but you're going to have to sometimes come up with the stuff that it is that you're going to do, uh, which isn't always easy, right? Sometimes, um, sometimes you really want a game to kind of meet you, not meet you halfway, because I think I think this game definitely meets you halfway. Um, but sometimes you want a game to just kind of do it for you, for lack of a better term. Uh, and definitely, that's not the way this or really other paradox games uh, operate. Um, yeah, so I think uh, next time we are going to go up here and beat up on a pirate space station, which is awesome. Uh, we'll keep doing our exploration. We'll keep kind of pumping up our military. Uh, we're doing all right as far as just pure money goes. Uh, so I am tempted to probably start building research stations down here. We should uh, study Lyrum now that that is also in our empire, thanks to our frontier outpost. Uh, yeah, so we got some things we'll do. Oh, and we have this guy now. We'll recruit a new science guy. Uh, uh, research speed. All research is plus 10%. I think that's, guys, research speed plus 5%. No, I'm going to take uh, field manipulation. Um, I think we're actually going to plug him in to... Uh, what's taking the longest? This guy does rocketry, um, not rocketry, uh, yeah, rocketry, this one is Voidcraft. So let's move this guy down here, because this one feels like it's taking the longest, and then we'll, wait, yeah. Um, then we will take this science ship and provide him that guy we just pulled, Luxodol, and we will have him go survey over here. We're losing a little bit of money, but that's all right. We have ways to recoup and recover that. Uh, so, yeah, we're underway. Thank you, for, as always, for joining me. Um, interested to hear your thoughts. If you picked up the game, I'd love to hear, you know, what you're enjoying, what's what's working for you, how you feel like the game is. Have you played it? Um, yeah, if let, let me know your thoughts. Uh, otherwise, until then, until next time, my name is Sean Sands from GamersWithJobs.com and the Gamers With Jobs conference call. And we will see you real soon.